Log Talk Radio. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Red Light Sports Ramble. I am Troy Otradovic, as always, joined with the wonderful, soon-to-be master's degree, Evan Watalison. I know it was supposed to be your last class tonight, Evan, but you told me they canceled class. But nonetheless, you finished your final project. You are going to get your master's degree. Congratulations. Yeah. I'm going to give you a round of applause. Thank you. So, good job, buddy. Much appreciated. Yeah, thanks to the uh, the weather, uh, they canceled the class because it is snowing out and it is snowing like crazy. So if you're in the Milwaukee area and you're listening, stay at home. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go anywhere. They're telling us that's coming a little bit this way this evening, Evan. One to three inches, depending on what part of Pittsburgh you're in. So, of course, my district manager said, are you having a late start tomorrow? And I'm like, look, I drive an hour to work. There's no late start. I'll be there on time, so will everyone else. It's as simple as that. Go slow. Now, if they if they We're say eight inches of snow and school still go, school still went on today, that's still going on tomorrow. We got eight inches. Of, we're getting eight inches of snow. That's crazy. <laughs> You'd think people that live in this stuff would be able to drive in it, but they can't. Um, I, I know. I know we got yeah. a show to do, but I got a funny story. I was driving yesterday, and where I was driving, it's a little bit hilly. And so I was driving, and I saw the flares, and there was a guy standing there and said, go slow, it's a little bit slick, there's an accident up the road, a half mile, car was flipped over on its top, okay, understandable, well, I'm going down the hill, and I'm not kidding you, Evan, the guy was going five miles an hour, five, I was getting a little frustrated, I'm like, you can go faster than five miles an hour. What normally should have taken me about 15 minutes to get home, 45 minutes. Because you couldn't pass them. Because it was a two-lane wow. two road. But anyway, we've got, we've got a great show tonight, bud. We're, we're switching gears, which is kind of yeah. off for us. We're going NBA. All-Star game was yesterday. Skills competition on Saturday. Then we're going to talk a little bit about this skills competition. We're going to talk about what of the events do we like the most. Do we like the NBA competition? Do we like the NHL's competition? Do we like Major League Baseball's competition? Or do we like them all? So let's get right into it, Evan. Yeah. All-Star game was completed well, yesterday. Say, before we get into oh, that, could, hey, before we get into that, could I uh, read this funny top ten list that I found? Yeah, go ahead. You read it to me. It's uh, pretty, reading it during pre-chat? Yeah, it was pretty funny. Let the listeners know. Uh, I just want our listeners to hear it. I uh, found it is from at Jim M. Weber. Um he tweeted this out because Brett Bielema and Nick Saban want to get some co college football rule change that you have to wait 10 seconds before you can snap the ball, um, at, you know, the 35-second play clock, you know, to allow the defense to get a substitution. So he, he, you know, I don't know if he created this or what, but just, you know, as a, you know, to be funny, the 10 other rule proposals for betterment of college football. Number one, all quarterbacks in shotgun formation must play with the blindfold on. Number two, if offense does not use huddle before snap, it must notify the defense of what play it is running. Number three, all receiving touchdowns will only come for three points. Number four, any player that has previously run a 40-yard dash under 4-5 is not eligible to play at FBS level. Number five, due to difficulty of SEC West, games against some belt teams will count as conference games. Number six, no head coach can offer a high school player a scholarship once an opposing head coach has called dibs on said recruit. And number seven, quarterbacks are allowed to transfer to opposing school uh, within games and play immediately. Eight, if offense lines up with more than two wide receivers, defense is allowed to have five extra defensive match. Conversely, if defense lines up with two tight ends, defense must play with five. Any head coach with the first name of Urban must serve a 20-year show-cause penalty, no questions asked. And number 10, if game is tied at the end of regulation, contest will be decided by cannonball contest between head coaches, except Kansas. <laughs> now, I know this has nothing to do with what we're talking about today, but I just saw this today and I just had to share it. It's from Ed Jim Weber. He is just hilarious. He's the uh, founder 
of college football and men's basketball website, lostletterman.com. So he just earned <laughs> a follow for me for today. <laughs> well, that's a good list. I mean, it's crazy. Some, you know, every, every game wants to change the rules. I mean, this could be another rant for us. Every every sport wants to change yeah. rules. I'm tired of it. Just get back to the way it was when I was growing up. I love sports. I still love sports. We don't need to change all the darn rules. It's always changing rules, changing rules, changing rules. Just play the game. Bottom line, game starts, play the yeah. game. That's that's the way exactly. I am. So let's let's talk NBA. You know, Saturday was the NBA skills competition. Yesterday was the All Star Game. I can honestly say, watched very little of the All Star Game, Evan. I flipped through it. I'm just not. I don't a, watch any of it. I it am, appears with The Walking Dead for me. So, I am just not a fan of the NBA All Star Game. Just the game itself. Now, Saturday's festivities, I watched some of those, not at length, but I watched some of those. So, before we get into that, let's actually talk about the first half of the season. We're actually a little bit more than halfway. There's only about 30 games left, give or take, for each team. But what surprises do you have here in the first half of the NBA season, Evan? Well, the first surprise, I have a couple. The very first surprise is just how bad the Eastern Conference is. And they they won the game yesterday, which makes it even more a head-scratcher. But the Eastern Conference has four teams above 500. They have Indiana as the one, Miami as the two, uh, Toronto as the three, and Chicago as the four. All the other teams are under 500. And Brooklyn, who had a horrible start to the year, 24 and 27, is the seventh seed, and they're just three and a half games behind Toronto. So that'd be my surprise number two, which is how bad Brooklyn has been with that team that they have. Jason Kidd was in way over his head be an NBA head coach straight off the league like that. And then we look at the Western Conference where they have nine teams above 500. Nine. Compared to the East, (laughs) I think they should substitute some of the teams in the West, put them in the East come playoff time so, you know, all the teams above 500 get in. Because there's going to be a team or two left out in the the West that are above 500. But uh, Dallas is surprising me. Right now at 32 and 22, they have the six seed currently. Uh, Memphis is surprising me a little bit. I know they got a new head coach, but I was expecting them to be the 29 and 23. But I was expecting them to be a little better, especially after last season. But I guess that's what happens when you fire your coach for no reason or don't resign them. Um, Phoenix at 30 and 21, who currently own the seven seed, that's a huge shocker because I couldn't even really tell you a guy on the entire Phoenix Suns team. But yet they're second place in the Pacific Conference. And then the Portland Trailblazers is another team who I couldn't tell you really any player on that team except for uh, Aldridge. And they're sitting there comfortably uh, in second place in their conference. And if I'm not mistaken, their head coach is a former Milwaukee Buck head coach. Yep, Terry Stotts, former Milwaukee Bucks head coach, who the Bucks gave up on very quickly. And now he's leading Portland to uh, second place in the in their conference. He uh, was he helped the Bucks finish get a one sixty three one thirty three record while he was with the uh, he was an assistant on that team, a lead assistant. And then as a head coach, he didn't last very long. And now he's uh, heads his team in first place. So that's really my surprise. Other than that, I, I assume Oklahoma City would be one of the top teams. And if Westbrook comes back top form, they should be even better. San Antonio, no surprise there. And then in the East, really the only surprise I have is Indiana's ahead of Miami. I figured Miami would have that one seed sewn up by now. But Indiana's hanging tough and has that one seed. But uh I think it's going to come down to basically the same as last year in the East. You're going to have Miami and Indiana competing for the, the the right to play for the NBA championship, and you're going to have San Antonio and Oklahoma City in the West with the sweep. I think the uh, team that could knock one of them out is going to be the Clippers. But you're going to have San Antonio and Oklahoma City competing to go see who goes to the NBA Finals in the West, and I'm guessing it's going to be a rematch of last year, but with Miami winning in five games this year instead of it going all seven. Well, 
you know, I, I can't disagree with you. The Western Conference, when it comes to the regular season, you know, it's amazing to me that as competitive as the West is, that they field teams that are all above 500. You know, I know you play in the Eastern Conference, but, I mean, they're they're playing each other day in, day out in the conference. My big surprise in the West is Portland, and I just like the way they play. Like you, not a lot of superstars on that team. Uh, I don't sit down and I don't watch every game start to finish. But from what I've seen of Portland, I just, there's something about them that I like. I mean, 36 and 17, a lot better than I thought they were going to do this year. You know, I, I thought they'd, they'd be playing maybe for the lower end of the, the conference to get in the playoffs. They're playing really good basketball. You know, but at the end of the day, you got the superstars on San Antonio, Oklahoma City. Who's who's going to argue with Kevin Durant? I mean, the guy, we talked about him a little bit on Saturday. The, the guy is just yeah. the guy is just awesome. I, that's all I'm going to say. I mean, the, the guy is an all-around great basketball player. There, I threw the word out, Evan. He's a great basketball player, and he just helps that team. I mean, so much. He makes everybody around him better. I mean, we talked about the definitions of elite, superstar, and great on Saturday. I would put Kevin Durant in that elite category because, like you said, with if Westbrook comes back, I don't know how that team can lose because Durant is making everybody around him better, and they're 43-12. and 12. They have the best record in the West. So that is a very competitive conference. But at the end of the day, I still think it comes down to Oklahoma City and San Antonio. But I told you in the pre-show, I always like to have one sleeper team, and I think it's Portland. I just don't know why. It's just something about Portland. I think that they can do some stuff. And, you know, when you look at it, the series, you never know what's going to happen in the playoffs. You know, they could they could get hot at the right time. And then let's go to the lowly East. You know, I don't have many surprises there. Some frustration, maybe, and some what happened to you guys, kind of. But I look at it, and my biggest disappointment, I think, is Chicago, twenty-seven and twenty-five. I thought they would. I thought they'd actually battle Indiana for the Central Division title. It tells you how much of an idiot I am. They're thirteen games back. Yeah, well, if it was. If it wasn't for Derrick Rose, they would be. But Derrick Rose got hurt once again, and that knocked him, uh, knocked Chicago down a little bit. Well, I, I know it knocked him down, but you know, I, I've just I've watched a few of the games, and it just a couple of years ago they looked like they were the up and coming team, and just looked very unorganized. And maybe Rose brings that that glue. I don't know, but I'm disappointed in where they're at. I thought they'd be a lot better than 27 and 25. Uh, my my surprise team, like you had said in the pre-show, is Toronto leading the, the Atlantic. I mean, granted, it's it's only by three and a half, and it's over Brooklyn and New York at twenty and thirty-two. You know, but I I, I know that's not a great division, but I didn't think Toronto would be at the top of that division. Did you think they'd be in first place? No, I didn't think they would be at all. Like I as I said about. Uh, um, uh, Phoenix. I really couldn't tell you a single guy on the uh, on the um, uh, Toronto team. Yeah, it's, it's you know, hey, give them credit. Twenty eight and twenty four. The problem is, you look at this, and it is by far between Indiana and Miami. Yeah, I I'm looking at it. Is there any teams that can even bring them the distance in the playoffs? If you ask me today, the answer no. the answer is no. And you had said you're surprised at Indiana. I maybe it's because I lived there for a year, Evan. But I I went to a few Pacer games. They've got a very good, solid team. So it doesn't surprise me that they're, oh, they do. I will, that I I thought I that they could like do that this. at all. <laughs> so it doesn't surprise me though that they're ahead of Miami. You know, because when I look at it, being able to be there and listen to the coverage and, you know, press conferences every day, um, I thought they could come out and do what they're doing this year. Um, at 40 and 12, it's almost expected in Indiana after what happened last year. And so, you know, 
to see them on top, I don't have a, you know, I thought they'd be there, but I thought Chicago would give them a little bit more of a run for their money. Like you said, an injury to Rose. But, man, 13 games back, that division is all but wrapped up. Miami's got a 12-game lead over Atlanta. That's all but wrapped up. I mean, you look at, you know, the seven seed Brooklyn, 24-27. and 27. You got Washington at six. At Well, even Atlanta, the fifth seed, is under 500. Who's going to give those two teams a run for their money? Unless the, unless the whole team gets the flu bug for a week, I don't see anybody beating Indiana or Miami. Do you? No, I don't. The only team I think that possibly could, you know, surprise them would be Chicago. Chicago, for whatever reason, just seems to, you know, they seem like the, you know, the 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 bug that just won't go away. You know, the, the why they keep bugging you, you swat at it and swat at it and swat at it and swat at it and just stays there. That's what Chicago reminds me of without Derrick Rose. Without, with, with Derrick Rose, they're a team that can legitimately contend. But without Rose, they're just they're that fly that just won't leave you alone. And that's kind of what I see Chicago. I think Chicago might be the surprise, but I don't think there's really a team in the Eastern Conference that can really give Miami or Indiana a game, barring injury. Yeah, I agree with you. Well, I noticed we have a caller, so let's bring the caller on, Evan, and go from there. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Red Light Sports Ramble. How are you today? Hi, I'm doing fine, fellas. This is Eugene from Home Court. I'm listening on. in. I'm chiming in. Hey, what's I'm up, driving buddy? Through the snow, and uh, I'm enjoying the show. Hey, what's up, buddy? Hey, we're we're right up your alley tonight, Colin. talking NBA. So give us your two cents worth. Who's hey, gonna, that's right. Who's going to beat Miami or Indiana? Right, we'll give you my my. Oh, I don't see anyone beating. Indiana or Miami in the on the eastern side of the playoff, eastern conference side of the playoff. Um, I, I think it's the ultimate showdown between these two, which kind of makes it rather boring. Um, you have to assume that the Knicks don't have enough. Uh, the Brooklyn, as you said, doesn't have enough. I, I'm, I, I'll even disagree with Evan a little bit. Even with Derrick Rose, I don't think the Bulls have enough. And uh, I'm a Miami Heat fan, so I'm, so I'm going with the Heat. But the the Eastern Conference is very, very boring. Um, at the beginning of the year, I, I predicted New York and Miami, I mean, I'm sorry, New York and Brooklyn to be heavy contenders, and it just hasn't panned out. So I, I agree with you guys' assessment that it's on the, at least on the East, East, Eastern Conference side, it's a two-team race. Take us take us over to the West. Yeah, you know, Brooklyn, Jason. Oh, go ahead, Evan. I would say Brooklyn, Jason Kidd's just been over his head. He should not have gotten that job. And I was talking to uh, Gary Wolfall, which I'm sure you know who he is, uh, right. Eugene, being in the area. I was talking to him once, and he said the same thing. You know, He's talked to a bunch of guys in the NBA, and it's the same way. I don't know why Brooklyn hires them, of all people. So as Troy was getting at, what's your take in the West? Can anyone knock off OKC or uh, San Antonio? Well, I think I think in the West Coast, uh, you actually have something more. The Western Conference, you have something more to watch. Because I, every time I don't pick the Spurs, the Spurs go to the finals. So I'm not going to discredit the Spurs, but I just can't see it happening again. Uh, I'm going to say, wow, this is tough in the West. I'm going to go either OKC or the Clippers. I think the Clippers have a, a, enough to challenge OKC. But Kevin Durant is just playing on a different level right now. But but to be honest with you, I think any any team in the West, if you get in, you got a shot versus the East, yeah. where you already know it's coming down to two teams. Uh, Golden State can get hot. Uh, Houston, if Dwight Howard can figure some things out, can get hot. Uh, Portland <laughs> is overachieved. Yeah, it's a big hit, but, you know, Portland is overachieved. So, I mean, anything is possible in the West, although your front two teams – and from my from my viewpoint, will probably be uh, the Clippers and, and Oklahoma City. Yeah, I, I was right. Yeah, I would put the Clippers there. They finally have the coaching with with Rivers. Um, you know, Don Negro. He, uh, you know, he's a decent coach, but he's not one that's going to take you to the championship. But I think they with Doc Rivers, they do. See, that's why I would pick them. You know, after OKC and San Antonio, that's why they'd be number three on my list. Yeah, my sleeper. Right, and, uh, that, that's a good. 
Yeah, my sleep, my sleeper team in the West out there, Eugene, like you said, is Portland. I just like the way they play. Like you said, they've overachieved. I didn't think they'd be as good as they are. Just something about them when I watch watch either the highlights or I watch a little bit of bit of them live. They're just playing good team basketball, and that's what you're going to need in the playoffs. So, you know, I always like to have one sleeper team. So I think I'm rooting for Portland this year, in, instead of all the big big names. But also, I agree. You know, Durant is playing, and it reminds me of the movie. It, it's way back, and I don't know if it's before either of your time. But the movie Space Jam with Michael Jordan, that's Kevin Durant right now. He's on a different planet. He's on a different planet right now. The guy's unbelievable. He's doing everything that can be asked plus more. I mean, it's it's a joy to watch him play, I'll tell you that much. The guy's just unbelievable this year. So you know, That's true. That's true. I'm going to let you guys know. It's a great show. Uh, I'm trying to, be, trying to be safe. Safe out here on the road. <laughs> And I'll leave you guys with a parting shot. Yeah, well, One thing that worries me about Portland is that they have the former Bucks coach, Terry Stott. So just on yeah. that, they're going to lose a couple of games. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you know, I'm, not, I'm not even going to go down that road. I was going to say nothing good comes out of Milwaukee usually, in basketball anyway. But, uh, no, with that, bud, drive safe. I'm going, to try, I'm going to try and listen live on Wednesday night if work will allow me, bud. All right, we, we appreciate it. Good show, fellas. Have a great evening. Talk to you soon, you bud. Be safe, man. All right. I think now that, I think now that gets us to, uh, you know, looking at the time, we only got about eight minutes to go. I think it gets us to, you know, the all-star festivities, you know, which ones do we enjoy the most? And I think, you know, we don't even have to talk about the Pro Bowl because we already talked about how much we can't stand the Pro Bowl, and they don't even have any school competition anymore since uh, – Forget the running back's name, but the, uh, there's a running back for the Patriots that uh, screwed up his leg. They used to do a flag football, like a uh, beach football game flag, and then this guy has completely uh, destroyed his knee and hasn't played again. So since then, they haven't had any skill competition that I can recall. Now, for me, I used to love the NBA slam dunk contest, but then I saw what they did do it on Saturday, and I vomited. I was like, why not just go back to the old way? Um, you know, you didn't have the big names in it, but it was still watchable. And then the other one I love is the home run derby. I just, I just love the home run derby. I just, you know, put it on mute. So I don't have to listen to Chris Berman sound like a chicken. But I just love watching the home run derby, and I love watching the uh, uh, the. I used to love watching the slam dunk contest, but I haven't really watched too many of the NHL's uh, skills competition. But I've heard lots of good things about them. Uh, I'll tell you what, Evan. Uh, I love what the NHL does. I mean, they have they have like a whole. It's almost like a mini Olympics before the NHL All Star Game. Um, I actually pulled it up so I didn't miss one of the one of the contests they have. They have accuracy shooting, fastest skater. They have a challenge relay, the hardest shot, a breakaway challenge, and an elimination shootout. And what that does, in my opinion, oh. it allows all of the participants. To enjoy in the festivities before the game. Because the game itself, to be honest, I don't watch the NHL All-Star game either. Because it's not regular hockey to me. There's no hitting. There's no defense. It's just fire at the poor darn goalie. And if I was a goalie, I don't know if I'd want to be in the NHL All-Star game. Because I would be black and blue after. Those guys can fire the puck. And so in the game, there's no defense. They're not sacrificing their body to block shots. So, of course, being from Pittsburgh, you have Melkin or Crosby winding up with a, a slap shot. It's going to hit you right between the eyes. I mean, that's all it is. I actually enjoy the competition, though, before a lot more than the game. So I actually, of all the major sports, I actually watch most of the NHL skills competition. I know there's, there's because of the Olympics, um, we're not going to have the All-Star game. But, you know, when you look at it, I love, <laughs> I love the competition. It's, it's great. I had a chance when the All-Star game was in Pittsburgh to go to the Home Run Derby, Evan. And I'll tell you what, I love watching it on TV. But you have to go in person one time. It is amazing. That stadium was just so loud. And I enjoyed it a lot. You don't have to worry about uh, Chris Berman watching it live, too. <laughs> well, I'm like you. If I have to watch it live, I'm turning the volume down. But 
I love the home run derby. Um, like you, I like the NBA All-Star game, the dunk contest. Going back, growing up, I remember when Dominique Wilkins was in it and just, you know, going from the free throw line, just, you know, a tomahawk jam, just good old-fashioned 360s, none of this fancy stuff and the team competition, blah, 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 blah. Go back to the way it was. I agree with you. Just go slam the ball, try to break the rim, smash the backboard. I like that kind of stuff. So I think it's got really commercialized, you know, over the past couple of years. But when I come down to it, of all the major sports, Evan, I like NHL. I love the NHL, what they do for their all-star weekend. Because with all those competitions, it also keeps the fans involved. Because there's so many different things that you can tune into one or the other if you don't like one of them. But if you're a hockey fan, all of their competitions relate to the game itself. Now, I know the Home Run Derby does, and people like power, and they like seeing, when it was at PNC, they like seeing the ball go into the river. That's awesome. That's great stuff. But the NBA, I mean, like you said, it's it's all get into the creative and, you know, trying to make it fancy. Yeah, I could do without it. So I'm on board with you there, but tell you what, next yes. next year, buddy, you got to watch yeah. NHL. You got to watch that skills competition. Oh, I will. It's just been a while since I've watched it, so I couldn't even remember what they do anymore. But you know, I the reason why they I think they are saying they changed the dunk competition is because none of the big name guys want to do it anymore, which I'm fine with. You know, like. Nate Robinson was a great dunker. He came out of nowhere and won. Um, and I just wish they would go back to their old their old way. Um, but we'll see if how long this you know little thing they did this year lasts. I don't think it got quite that good a response from what I saw on Twitter and Facebook um, in the All Star game yesterday. In general, most people didn't like the highest scoring All Star game in um, NBA history, but for the game itself, like I, I'd much rather watch the NHL All-Star game or MLB All-Star game because, you know, basketball is just, uh, you know, an offensive showcase. They're not really playing that hard. Um, and the same goes for that. their, uh, their first-year player game, you know, rookies versus the first-year guys with the, you know, like Giannis, he didn't get too many opportunities in that game because everyone was all in it for themselves. And, you know, you never get to see, you know, anyone else really do anything if the ball is not in their hands. And then we all, all know about the Pro Bowl, the <laughs> NFL, and then just the, the NHL. I love hockey in general. You know, hockey is just a fast-paced game. It's fun, and now you got the best of the best going up against one another. And the NHL All-Star Game in baseball, you can't, and I hope I can say this on radio, but you can't half-ass it uh, in the MLB All-Star Game. You can't. It's not like the NFL or the NBA. You cannot half-ass it, and that's what I like about the uh, MLB All-Star game. Well, I'll tell you right now, among all three of them, if you're going to look at a game that is probably closest to the regular season, it's probably MLB. Probably the closest. Because you got good pitchers and good hitters battling it out. You know... The Pro Bowl this year was a little bit more competitive, but still, I could care less about that. Like I said, I, you already heard my take on the NHL. I don't watch the game. I, I flipped through it, but I don't watch the NBA All-Star game. I, I turn back just to see how bad the score was, and that's about it. So, But with that said, bud, we're just about a minute to go. Another great show. Thank you, Eugene, for calling in. You know, our counterpart on Blog Talk Radio. Home Court Sports, it's a great show. Check it out on Wednesday nights. Always appreciate him calling in, especially for NBA stuff. Well, that said, Evan, I'll let you wrap it up, bud. Well, for those that are driving around uh, who are in the Chicago, Milwaukee area, just make sure you drive safe and give yourself extra time. And if you need, and if you don't have to go out, just stay at home, kick your feet up, relax, have a cold one. And I don't even know what's on TV tonight to watch, but just you know, stay out, stay home. And thank the listeners. Uh, thank you, Gene. And I uh, look forward to this uh, these, this week's shows. So with that said, 10 seconds. Report.
Well, Evan, if they're going to be stuck inside, they can go to our YouTube page and listen to all 165 episodes of The Ramble. There's 165 of them there to listen there you to. Go. So they can listen to them. That they can do, definitely. So just go to YouTube, look up Red Light Sports Ramble, find all 165 episodes. I know we're off the air live. We're still recording, though, and I want to give props uh, to one of the teams that uh, we actually have media credentials for, uh, the Johnstown Tomahawks. They played this weekend, Evan. They played against the Michigan Warrior, Warriors, and they swept them. So they swept at home against, uh, against the Warriors. I did send an email out. I'm trying to get one of the staff to come on the show to talk about uh, NA, NAHL hockey. I haven't got a response yet, but hopefully Mr. Sheets, who's in charge of PR, gets back in touch with me. And just so the listeners know, we also have a special guest on Thursday. We're going to have a Daytona 500 preview, NASCAR, Thursday night, 530. But with that said, everyone, enjoy the evening. If you're in the Midwest, stay safe. I know in PA that it's supposed to be coming later tonight. Just be safe, everybody. We love all our listeners. We'll, we'll see you at the next red light. We'll get back at you tomorrow, everyone.